gearwebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches every Friday. is Free Patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at gearwebsites.com. All right, welcome everybody to our Daily Gun Show. Come to you live every weeknight at midnight Eastern and talk about guns, about an hour. And uh, each night we have a separate topic. We don't just go live for the heck of it. We go live to accomplish some things. And uh, in order to do that, we uh, focus on specific things each night. And on Wednesdays, we look at pop culture. We have some fun and guns and movies and um, media. We also play the tactical quiz. So tonight we're playing Stump the Chump, which is a version of the stack tactical quiz where we flip the tables on everybody watching and the people that watch are also playing if they choose to attempt to stump the chump. So that means you can be watching this show live right now at midnight and playing by asking a question. And uh, you can also, if you're a Patreon or a channel member, be participating in the show instead of just watching it by being a co-host. Uh, let me know if you'd like to be a co-host. We got Baron in here who took the uh, opportunity to be a co-host. Thanks for jumping in. Glad to be here. So that's actually pretty good because if you were throwing questions, I might not know what they all are. But uh, so now people have the opportunity of trying to stump me or try to stump Baron or if anybody else jumps in here or if someone wants to jump in here and unless I guess if you wanted to just be the moderator i asked someone to be the moderator but i got blown off so if you wanted to be a moderator instead of a co-host feel free co-hosts are playing i guess or i should say uh contestant sort of like think of this as oh dang it, hollywood squares except it's gun channel so gun channel squares except there's only two of us because nobody else is scared, <laughs> about, is scared to play but two then, person hollywood think, squares well except gun channel squares but uh like I said, there's, we could have a moderator unless you want to be a moderator, or you could uh, be playing out there by uh, asking a question. So here's how the question how it works. If you have a question for the contestants, which is us, you can put it in the, how do you spell this? You can put it into the, into the text there by putting this Q, right? A Q with a dash in front of it. And then that way you can, uh, you're asking your question. And that's an official question. I can star them over here and then we can pay attention to them. So if you ask a question, the moderator's job would be to determine if it's a good question or not and then to place points on it. Because it's not fair to throw out stupid questions. Nobody knows like a nine millimeter question or something that's useless like a nine millimeter question or whatever. Something that nobody's gonna know is too obscure. One, I mean, it can be asked. You're allowed to do whatever you want, but uh, it'll get a lot of points. However, uh, not very many points for missing it. Let's put it that way. So uh, maybe that's the way to say it. And so better questions will get more points. And then I think that would be sort of like, you know, a way to put some buffer in there. So people don't ask questions that are so crazy that no one can answer them. And at the same time, we don't have to answer dumb questions that everybody knows the answers to. So uh, we'll do our best to kind of just determine the thing. But as a general rule, now you know how to ask questions. Just put a Q and then type in whatever if you're using your finger or a keyboard. That's how you would do it. Um, let's see. So you can ask questions. 
Uh, those are going to be answered by the two contestants or co-hosts here. Uh, and then uh, we'll be fighting the audience, technically through trivia. So if you stump, there's only two of us, so I guess it's not all three of us. But if you stump both of us, you get 20 points. And then uh, if you both, it's 10 points each, so I guess it doesn't matter. I don't have to explain it. You get 10 points for each person you stump. And as an audience member, then you gain points. If you're a Patreon or a channel member, you get even more points. And the, or you win even more stuff, I guess. And that's just basically the general rules of the thing. So we can take as many questions as we can, depending on how many people ask questions and how many, how much time we have before Mouse Party happens, which is a show that comes on after this one in about an hour and something minutes. All right, so we've got a single question starting out the game with which came out first, the AK or the AR? So pretty sure this is a pretty basic question. We're going to give this one yep. 10 points. So, uh, what are you going with? AK. Yeah, AK was 1947. The AK or AR was like in the 50s. Yeah, something like that. Like, that, like 58, 59. When was it? Because it was the AR 10. So it's competing Definitely with yeah, the M14. So. Oh, and the. I did have uh, actual winnings tonight. So I've got a uh, booklet of patches over here that uh, I leave in the van usually. But it's not in the van. It's in front of me right now. So uh, the winner will be able to grab something from the booklet of patches over here. All right. So I also need to come up with another way to keep score. So what I'm going to do is put uh, G23's question over here if I can do it and his name if i can do it and just a quick copy and paste perhaps and eh, not quite but it'll go close enough so i think we're saying that uh baron's getting 10 for that one and i'll take 10 for that one i don't know if i should do it that way because it's like oh yeah that's the right answer so i think uh we might just go with whoever wants to take the question i don't know i'm up for grabs on how to how to actually accomplish the uh Jump the stump with a panel. So next up would be DJ asking the question, the Fuller Gun Collection is located in what state? Bonus for the state. Bonus for the date maybe that the founder, Claude Fuller, started the collection. That's probably what he's trying to say. So you know what he's talking about, and you know the question? I'm going to give that one 10, 10 points. It's a normal question. I he's got no talking. idea. I just have to guess. You know. Okay. So um, like I say, for people that are paying attention to museums, that kind of crap around us, so I'm going to give it still 10 points. It's not totally obscure. It's a little bit, but we've also talked about it kind of recently in some chats. So um, yeah, so what do you, what's your guess then? Um. Hmm. Oklahoma. Well, that's close. So uh, I'm going to say it's like this. DJ gets 10 points for stumping Baron, and then doesn't stump me because I know it's in Arkansas. But uh, I don't Damn. get the bonus for remembering <laughs> the date. I mean, I remember that the guy was a guy who had the collection and he had some uh, uh, resources accumulated in his life. I forget exactly what he did, probably something in oil. And then uh, he had left the, the land, the like the either the facility for the building or the building. I mean, I built the building, but I don't know if it was built when he was alive or not. But then... Um, the uh, collection itself, and then he built the town hall or something, or the library or something like that too. So he had a bunch of money left over when he was done, lived, you know, when he died, and he left that to his town. So uh, I just don't remember. It was like the 40s, 46 maybe, but I don't remember the date. So that's a good question, uh, bringing us an opportunity to talk about firearms museums is always good, and we know that because uh, Toby from Cape Cone Works had just gone down to visit Nighthawk Customs, which is also in Berryville. Uh, Arkansas, and um, it's in the same town. So they were talking about visiting it. 
All right, so the next one, and this is open, or not open book necessarily. I'm not doing an open book at least. What year did South Carolina, Carolina legalize concealed carry? I don't know if anybody's going to know that off the top of their head. So, Yeah, I don't. Yeah, um, that would be very tough unless you lived in, in that town. So I'm going to make that one a draw. If anybody wants to fight, then you're welcome to jump in here. But uh, if that would have been a little bit easier question, I would have given DJ points for stumping us. But come on, man. I'm not going to memorize every single state. Every single state has concealed carry. That's the problem. I don't even know what all the states are, let alone, you know, whatever the uh, date of their concealed carry. Um, I blame Night Strike. If he'd say it more, then we'd all know. <laughs> uh, G23 says Colorado. Hmm. Dragon Man's 30th anniversary or 30th annual machine gun shoot. Uh, so I don't know what that is. That's just a statement of a name of a state. Okay, so the next one is from something. What's the name of the West German company that imported 22 Luger clones and conversion kits? Hmm. So that's an interesting question. And I mean, even though you technically didn't have the Q in there, I totally get it. But um I feel like that should be a question that somebody could know. So I'm not going to say it's totally obscure, but at the same time, I don't think people are going to just know this, but what, what about Baron? All right. I'd have to guess. Go ahead. Mauser. Mauser. Hmm. Name of the company that imported the 22 Luger clones and conversion kits. I mean, Mauser seems like the only one I would know also. So I'm going to say Mauser too. So I, and I'm going to say if we don't want to answer, how about this? If we think it's too crazy, we don't have to answer. If we want to guess, then we're accepting the opportunity to give, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. I'm going to just say Matt because what the hell? Can't put shit like that in front of somebody's dyslexic and not have me say Matt. So I'm going to call it whatever the hell Matt. Um, give them the 10 points. So do we know? We'll have to answer that one because we don't know. Um, so does our moderator look up the question to see if we got no a moderator? Right? We don't got a moderator. That's what I'm saying. The moderator could have done some sort of keeping track of this, like an unpaid intern oh, would have been nice. DJ volunteered. No, he didn't. he's not in here. So uh, next. Oh, he's, he said DJ he would volunteer. 1988. Well, it's impossible to do it from the thing. So uh, 1988. I don't know why he's saying that. Why is he just saying dates? Oh, what year did South Carolina legalize concealed carry? Here's the deal. There's no point in answering them unless you're answering your own question because you can't play against the rest of the audience. I didn't put that in there. Maybe in a future version of Stump the Chump, we'll come up with some kind of weird audience way of calling it challenge the audience or something. But uh, in this one, we don't have that. Up. That's not an option. So then early watch chat. Is this? Are you allowed to be up this late? Or somebody just work on this account? What year and war was uh, something placed into regular service? Do you know what that is? How to say it? Because I'm sure I've heard it and I just don't know what I'm saying. Because I don't think it's Shosha. True. Yeah, I'm sure I've heard that before, but I don't know what it is. Placed into regular service. Bonus, what army? Sounds French to me, so I'm going to guess French. World War I, France. Oh, what, West German, what year and war? Thing. I thought it was asking what country. Year. Hmm. Uh, I mean, that's a real question. I wouldn't know. 1914. So I had to get three things right to get <laughs> one thing right. <laughs> that was a hard one. I definitely got part of that wrong, if not all. Uh, year in war is basically the same thing. And then place to plus a bonus of what army okay i guess my tried to bonus of france and you got the world war one part so i was close it was 1916 world war one france oh that's true so i'm giving early watch a, a ten, uh, 10 points for stumping you and then i don't know i'm gonna call it a draw because i said france and got the bonus but i didn't attempt the other part so i mean i knew world war one but that's fake um 
can, if you're going to spend a bunch of time, see, this is why you can't moderate from out there because you're spending a bunch of time chatting with other people. It's not going to happen. So outdoors with Big Matt is just saying hello. So you can you can chat if you want, but now we're just saying stuff. So uh, at this point, it looks like, oh, I'm winning with 10 points. Baron's got 10 points. All right. Yeah. Baron's got 10 points. And Early Watch has got 10 points. We're waiting for that or whoever to tell us or did they tell they didn't tell us yet what yeah, what company was that yeah from the german thing otherwise here's the deal we're waiting for questions uh some people are asking questions some people ain't asking questions is it because they're scared i don't know is it because they don't know nothing about guns maybe i don't know it's hard to know because they're not asking questions but if you ask a question here's what's going to happen the question will get given to the panelists of us and then if we know the question, we get the points. If we don't know the question, you've successfully stumped us, and then you get points. So far, Early Watch has successfully stumped us, and we're waiting to find out about this other person. Answer, Irma. So we both lost. So he got 20 points. So, so far, that person is at 20 points from that one question. See how that worked? And now the next question, I believe, is... DJ asking, even though we didn't put a cue in front of it, like it's required to be done. It's only the rule or whatever. Um, how many? Oh, he put it back in there with a cue. Thank you very much. So, how many states have an Air Force Museum? That just makes it way easier for me to be able to go copy and paste. Oh, shit. And then this time I didn't do what I was going to do, but whatever. DJ, just type it in here. Boom. And then Crap. How many states have an Air Force Museum? That's a trick question. Is there a way to know? I have no idea. It's a good question, I think. But, um, shit. I don't know. So I'm going to say 14. So that will be a 10-point question. So you're just going to say you don't know? I think when it's a so if I say I don't know, I can't lose, right? No, no, that's the thing. Because there's no way I'm not trying to make a way so people can just sit there and not do shit and win. So you know what I'm saying that would happen if people just never played, right? So if it's an easy question, you're gonna 20. get stumped, right? If it's so if it's ten or wait. If it's a ten point question, you, you gotta answer. If it's something like a question that's out of the realm of being a ten point question, then we'll come up with the rule. But basically, yeah, you can't just we can't just sit them out because we, you know, so we don't have the default answer. So I think I'm should we one. ask for multiple choice? Oh snap! Okay, well, so they have to give us question. four options and we pick from that. I would like that a lot better. You don't have to do that, but you got a lot better uh, potential of us taking the question. How about that? And yeah, then we answer means. every single question they ask, that makes no matter easy. how hard. Yeah, yeah. If you give us options then and you should have enough you get 200 characters so if you have to double it up or something let me know but yeah that makes a lot more sense so give us some options and we'll definitely answer if you don't then we're going to decide if we want to answer so i'll let everybody uh do what they're going to do with that so all right so let's this isn't one of them fake ass scripted shows where everybody's like oh here watch this professional blah 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 and it's all fancy because a bunch of people paid a bunch of money for it we're not trying to sell you nothing. We're just having some fun, trying to play some knowledge trivia with some gun stuff at a time when we really should be just calling the Senate, right? Telling the Senate to uh, screw off with this whole idea of the assault weapons ban. We should be appreciating the ladies at the DC project who are uh, literally in DC right now, 55 of them, all doing their thing all day long. Now they're posting a shit ton of Instagram stuff, I'm assuming, as they were scooting over to wherever they're going to eat and hang out for a little bit. Then they're probably all going to collapse and then do it all over again for a couple of days. So uh, while we're sitting around not doing any of that, letting all the ladies do all the work, we're going to kind of sit around here and have some fun. So hopefully that gave people enough time to say their stuff again. What countries besides Russia licensed? Well, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but basically created the AK-74s. Um, you're going to have to give us what you consider four answers there, but what countries besides Russia had a 74? So not China, definitely Bulgaria. Yes, Germany. 
Um, yes, Romania. Hmm. I'd say less than six, probably. Um, yes is the answer from one of the doc publications available at uh, care websites. Which one is yes? I don't know which one is a yes or no answer. The end what year did South Carolina legalize concealed carry maybe? I think that's the one DJ's talking about. There's a issue with uh, lag and backlog on chat if we get sidetracked and say something. So the next question is coming in from G23. And it is, the Webley revolver was the standard service pistol for which country's army from 1887 to 1963? Italy, Francisco, UK, or Germany? United Kingdom. Yeah, that's pretty easy then. United Kingdom. I like the question, but we wailed on that one. I would ask something like, what was the one that was used in the movie The Wall or something like that? So that... Uh, Throw that one in there. So then uh, that one was G23. It's tough whenever they're, well, I don't know. That one wasn't too tough unless it was, unless he threw like a thing in there, like the 38 special one or something or some weird caliber that, you know, they didn't use and that only one country used that we didn't know. But How uh, many marks were, were made out of the Webley revolver? Like... What did they get up to? Five? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that would have been tough. Or how many versions of it? So I think that gives us 10. And then we go on to the next question. How many square feet in, in an acre of land? <laughs> Why is my dog making so many snort noises? That was me. How many square feet in an acre of land? Is it, what is it, 2,400? I don't know. I got no idea. Yeah, that's a weird one. So then we get DJ again. The Rock Island Museum. What's up with all this snorting? The Rock Island Museum is the second oldest museum in the country. Which U.S. Army Museum is larger? Oh, that's an interesting question. You got anything on that one? Uh, no, I got nothing. So DJ, I don't know a single a U.S. Army museum. Well, you probably do. You're just probably not thinking about him like that. But um, uh, DJ's a channel member, so if he wins, he'll end up winning even more loot than a regular person would. And he's a patron, so maybe he'll even get three times the loot of a regular person. Um, so the Rock Island uh, Museum is in Illinois, and it's the second oldest one. The first oldest one is in West Point. The largest U.S. Army Museum? That's a good question. If it isn't, if it isn't uh, Rock Island, then, and I don't think it's West Point because I don't think it's big or nothing. It's just old. I would say S Springfield Armory. I think it's Springfield Armory. So oh, I'm an idiot. I didn't consider that an Army Museum. It, the, the actual armory is. I mean, the company you know sold their name in the '60s or whatever, but or bought the name in the '60s. But the place itself is a museum. I'm just I've never been there, so my problem. I mean, physically though, bigger. It might be the facilities and everything. But they or made no, guns for West Point is the largest, so I'm wrong. So they, they made guns for everyone though, not just the uh, army. No, no, no. Springfield Armory is in. Massachusetts or some shit, and it's the one. Yeah. It was our first literal armory, and they made guns for only the army. Yes, they never. Oh, they didn't make stuff for like the navy. I mean, maybe the navy, but they didn't make like guns and have a gun shop out front. And people could walk. No, no, I know that or anything like that. Yeah. So I'm going to give DJ twenty points for that one because it was a good one, and it brought up a bunch of museums, and he's already thrown like a bunch of things out there, and doesn't have any points for him yet. 
So now he's got points. Everybody gets points if they participate and bring stuff to the table like that. He said there's 18 states with Air Force museums. So I don't we remember what wrong. he said. Yeah. But he didn't give us a thing. I'm going to give us all five because what the fuck? If you want to do it a different way, then you're fucking more than welcome to make your own damn chant or game show every single week. So everybody got five points on that one because it was a good one and it brought up the Air Force Museum. All right. Next one is question. This is from G23. Which guns nicknames include the Chicago Tripwriter, the Trench Broom, and wait. I think you got caught you got carried away with your or no, I see what he's trying to do. So which guns nicknames include the Chicago typewriter and the trench broom? I don't even have to read the answers. We both know what this one is, right? Thompson submachine gun. So that was a good one though. And uh you probably could have left that one without ones because that was a, such a good one, but uh non what's the word? Non uh specific or really non not you know, it wasn't too technical, but that was a good one. So um I guess we get the points for that though. Well let me give them to you. I mean I knew what it was too. So let me put uh, G twenty three over here. Why did it do this? Shit. Oh man. Come on, man. See if I had an intern I wouldn't have to do none of this shit. I would just yell at the intern for not being fast enough or whatever. <laughs> No, you kids, serious? Are there things I'm trying to delete and it deletes the other half of the shit than what I'm trying to delete? Making it very difficult to be fast over here. All right, so we're given 10 points to Baron on that one. And then this says G23. All right, next up is what South African company got bought by Keltec and then rebranded the handgun designs? Was it South African? I thought it was. Swedish, Swiss, or Swedish, or some shit. Oh, no, no, wait. No, yeah. Wait, I don't know. Maybe I don't know the answer to this one, then. Do you know this one? Um. No, no, I don't. I'd have to guess. Trying to find it over here. We do have a poll going. I don't know what happened to my poll. My YouTube was super screwy today, and it was like I had to put the show up twice. Oops, I had to put the show up twice. I don't know if the poll is showing up. I guess it is. So who's going to win tonight's Stump of the Chump Challenge? Will it be me? Will it be Baron? Will it be the audience, somebody in the audience? Or will we all win because we're having fun together? So you can go ahead and answer that. I think once we get to 20 uh, answers over there, we'll just end it so we can have more fun with the poll over there. But I am attempting to copy and paste over here. So going, going back to what South African company got bought out by Caltech? Well, I, I would say Intertech or Intratech. I can't remember. Intertech. But then... He posted his uh, answer. Oh, what did he put in there? Grendel. I was going to say, but I don't know if Grendel was a separate company from South Africa. So that's awesome. So let me put the question in here again. So whoever agent is, move this to here. Cut that out of there. Well, that went way faster. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to give... That, oh, see, and then I can paste that over there. That's easy. So that person gets 10 points for stumping and 10 points. So that makes it 20 points for interesting trivia. So Grendel is a company that definitely has some designs and stuff. And I, and, and Kelgren got all mad when I suggested some shit about that. I forget now what it anymore. But, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So it's interesting. So I really appreciate that. So, um, so again, if you don't know, Intratech is what made the Tech 22, and that's where the dude from Caltech comes along, George Kelgren. But then he worked at Grendel, and then he worked at Caltech, and that wasn't uh, 
at least that when I was looking into it before, that wasn't obvious what you just uh, mentioned there. Uh, let's see, saying 43,000 square feet in an acre of land. Oh, maybe I was thinking of yards or something. But that's not something I've I dealt with. I haven't uh, I haven't blacktop an acre of land in a while. So let's see. The next one would be from DJ. The IDPA was founded in what year? Uh, bonus. Name one of the founding members. So that's a tough one without things. He heard us say that we need things, right? We need things for that. There's no way we're just going to know that. Yeah, we need multiple choice I mean, I like, like G23 something. is doing. I think it's like 70 something. But I can name some of the members for damn sure. So that, is that how we're saying this? Says East Germany and Bulgaria had licensed copies of, the, I'm not going to put DJs in there because I'm going to give them a chance to throw some multiples at us because he might have to do that in two typing sessions or whatever. Um, so then the next one would be Dat saying East Germany and Bulgaria had licensed copies of the, of the 74. The other 545 AKs are unique. Oh, okay. So he's saying two was this answer to this one. And how did I move this over? So what, didn't I put that in here? I guess I didn't put that one in here. So I'm going to put that. So you're not seeing the screen, but I'm all over the place trying to cut, copy and paste. So what countries besides Russia was right after how many states have uh, Air Force museums? So I'm just trying to put these into some sort of order so that if somebody's ever interested in looking at this in the future, they can see what's happening. So I think that's pretty neat. Did you know about the AK-74s? Have you had any interest in that ever? No, I uh, I did not know that. So I'm giving Dat 10 points for that one because it's interesting as shit. And then, uh, I mean, it may be wrong. I mean, I'm not saying it's 100% right. AK stuff is pretty tough to nail down, and whatever you think is nailed down, good luck. And, you know, three years from now, five years from now, as more data comes out and more people research. So um, things change. You know, there's facts, and then there's facts that get elaborated on type of thing. But no, it's super interesting. And I like the, the question. So we're getting them from all angles. Uh, let's see. I think, think it's kind of tough with the lag again. If we would have had a moderator in here, it would have been nice because then we'd have somebody else helping to shuffle some of this stuff around. But we're trying to make this work using the technology of the day. This is 2022 after all. And uh, we're using a software package out of Canada called the Duck, the Snooty Duck. And uh, gives us a chance to do stuff like click on G23's question. Shows up at the bottom of the screen here. Which country exported the most guns between 20 or 21, 20, 2001 and 2010? Was it Russia, United States, Germany, or France? Holy shit, dude. So first off, I'm going to go find the damn question over here. Which country, there we go, is from G23, and now I'm going to actually do it the right way so I can, when I bring it over here, I got the stuff I need. I'm going to give you five points. I'm giving you ten points just for bringing an awesome question to the table and typed out. So it's such a, like, it's an exemplar question. So I'm just going to give them ten points right off the bat, even if we don't get it right or if we do. So then which country exported the most guns between 20, 2001 and 2010, was it Russia, United States, Germany, or France? You got an answer, or are you guessing? I would have to guess United States. Hmm. So, 21 and 10, Russia had a couple of, what do you call those, like, or, you know, the factories in Russia had a couple of orders. Venezuela's in there, I think. Oh, maybe they're not. Venezuela might have been 14 trying to think of anything big happen that would have bought a bunch of guns from Russia. I don't think France has a chance. Germany, come on, man. But I wanted to say United States, but we keep a lot of the guns too. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we export some, but some countries export a lot more. 
I really think I'm not sure. I'm going to go with the United States because I'd rather the United States win. Because it's a cool thing. That would, means we would uh, be another reason why the gun industry is so good. But uh, that's an awesome question. So we'll find out, I guess. DJ is saying from the museum, I think, that uh, West Point is the largest and the oldest. Right on. Next is another one from Early Watch. You're still doing the chat, right? I always don't understand what's going on. I don't know if you moved the live thing to a different one or what, but uh, Early Watch used to be the other side of this show because, well, I don't know if it's still Jimmy, but that's uh, the co-host of this show. Remember when I was looting earlier to have an unpaid intern or a uh, moderator for free? That's what Jimmy used to do. I know what it's like to have an unpaid moderator or unpaid intern. So... Uh, uh, Jimmy used to basically run this show, and now he's doing some other show in the mornings. But uh, he's asking, or whoever this person is, is asking, which one is John Browning's striker fired pistol? Oh, man. I'm giving this one 10 points also. This is a good question. Which one is John Browning's striker fired pistol? So, first off, Baron, do you need the answers, or do you just know this one off the top of your head? Um, I'm guessing between two. I know it's not a Glock, and it's not the 1918. All right, so let me look. Um, the John Browning Striker fired pistol. Which one is John Browning's? So I know that the Browning High Power was originally Striker fired, but it ended up getting a hammer at the end. Well, the 1908 Mini Browning, Baby Browning, is Striker fired. He made a ton of yeah. Striker fired guns. So which one was his first? I have no idea. Which ones of these are one of his so that's a good question so i definitely don't know off the top of this list so an i'm M19 guessing the 1910 and it ain't that and the uh glock he didn't do that and it's it is striker fire i guess i don't know what the hell an fn1 is so yeah i'm gonna go with fn 1910 because like say i know he invented the mini the browning whatever uh baby browning in eight or something like that so he already figured out striker by then but the thing is, he might have put made. He might have invented striker fire for a shotgun, and I wouldn't know because I'm not that aware. So I think we're both picking FN 1910. Yeah, I guess he'll have to answer us on that one. Uh, Grendel was the original Caltech. So back from that Grendel and Caltech question, very good. But anyway, I was also given early watch ten points just for that. Oh, you know what I'm doing over here? I am not. I'm given early watch everybody's points so let me just do a little bit of shuffling while i do i'm going to mention the page of patreons patreons are the people that subscribe to what we do so just like if you wanted to like have a magazine come to the house every week or maybe some kind of shit on your tv sorry about that or subscribe to some kind of a service like uh satellite radio or something like that <clears throat> people that uh, subscribe to what we do, make it possible for us to do what we're doing. And you might be like, who cares what you're doing? But there's other people out there that do stuff too. So if you want to invest in content, the creation of content that you value, check out a place called Patreon. It's a platform like a social media platform, except that it's for people that want to create and people that want to support those folks that are creating. And it can be all kinds of different things. There's comic books over there. There's uh, music. There's uh, podcasts, of course, like this one or other kinds, good ones. And then there's, um, you know, there's stuff. So check it out. And if you enjoy uh, what we're doing, check out what people are doing over there. You might find that uh, they also have something to offer that you might be able to uh, participate in or contribute to. And... Who knows what kind of creative things I might be doing. So, again, I'm moving everybody's points around because I just realized that I've been putting all the points tonight into early watches column, and that's technically not fair. So <laughs> there we go. Now everybody's back to being even. DJ comes up with another question out in left field. Wait, what is this? We're still good in time. Missouri is the show me state. Show me that you know what missouri city hosts oh show me that you know what missouri city hosts the bianchi cup wow that's a tough one do you know that one no idea yeah um i mean again if if i Kansas heard city. 
I don't think even think it's that. It's a it's a weird one. So I don't know if he's gonna. He is throwing some answers out there, some multiple choices. So I'm gonna drop this as if there's some multiple choices coming, and then we'll see if there's some multiple choices coming because I know it's the name of a weird city. I don't think it's a normal one like Kansas. Oh, he city. did. He did post the uh, multiple choice. Yeah. Okay. Good. So let me put uh, this. So we got another one from DJ. So this one was from Columbia, Kansas City, St. Louis, or Mexico. This was from his first one. That's from his. Uh, which city hosts the hosts the Bianchi Cup? Oh, it is from that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think? Well, I already guessed Kansas City. Mexico. That's what the ones that's throwing me. Mexico? I don't know why you would put Mexico. So man, I want to say Colombia. So I guess he'll have to tell us. So you're saying Kansas City, I'm saying Colombia. Yeah, it was the only city I knew of. <laughs> Well, Kansas City's way the hell out over by Iowa, right? Or Kansas? So, um, yeah, it's right on the know, border. I don't know if it's way out there or not. I know it's in a weird city, but for some reason, I want to think it was south of St. Louis. I don't know if that's because I've seen it on a map or I just, you know, sometimes I map assume. And if I only know one place in a, in a state, I just assume everything I hear about that state is in that, that city. Uh, You're right. So, he just posted the answer it was Columbia. Oh, snap. So that's a good one. So I'm going to give you me 10 points and then give DJ 10 points because if he uh, stumped Baron. All right. So then I think the next one that comes up is from GGW Outdoors. First question from GGW. What are the longest service serve longest serving modern military rifles in the world? So, do we need uh, multiple choices for that one? Yeah, like does it count if there's variants or does it have to be like well, what the were you exact gonna same rifle? Are you going to answer like a thing or are you going to answer like a range or something? Like a range of guns, like the five four Rs or something like that. Me or yeah, are you, you asking GGW? Yeah, like, do you have a. I mean, we could ask GGW for a multiple choice, or we could just make guesses. I guess or whatever we think. So do you, I'm ready to make a guess, but I don't know. We well, did say uh, modern. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming you mean something that's still in service. So are we talking like, can I, I heavy? A or, I don't think it's a sword, but, you know, some kind of gun, right? Like the Ma Deuce is still in service. Yeah. But is that modern? Yeah. They're still using it. That means it's modern. You know, so. Anyway, so do you want them to give us multiples or you're comfortable throwing a guess out there? Yeah. Um, Ma Deuce. Um, Is the Modus older than the 1918? I forget what year the M2 was made. I think it was around, right around the same time. It might have been, yeah, it was World War One. No, it might have been World War Two. So the M1918 might still be in use technically, and it's 308. So I would have. Anyway, I'm picking PKM because I think it's PKM. That's good. It might yes. be the Mosin, but I think it's the PKM. But I don't know. So that's a good one. So we'll find out. Next one is from Early Watch again. What was built in 1884 that revolution that wait, yeah that revolutionized warfare? Bonus, who built it? Well, that's an interesting question. Open ended. So, hmm. what was built in 1884 that revolutionized warfare? Bonus, who built it? Oh, I think I figured out a better way to do what I've been doing. Hold on. Yep, I did. I pretty, pretty much mastered this. If I had an intern, I'd be yelling at them if they weren't doing it this specific way now. Do um, you have any idea? Um, smokeless powder. Oh, okay. That's a good one. 
I do not remember when the French developed it, but that's oh, my guess. Oh, come on. Well, who cares when the French invented it? Because what's his face's brother in law and what's his dad's uncle invented it? Uh, Maxim's uncle and Maxim's brother invented it. Because, you know, there's the Maxim that invented the machine gun, there's the Maxim mm -hmm. that invented smokeless powder in the United States, which I don't know what the fucking difference is. And then there's the Maxim who made the suppressors. The suppressors is the son of the machine guns, and the smokeless powder is the brother of the machine guns and the uncle of the suppressor guy. And they're all named Maxim, and they're all like born and die in like the same two weeks. Super confusing. <laughs> so uh, what was built in 1884? I would say the revolver, but that was like more like 1850s. And then I was thinking the trapdoor Springfield, but that was earlier than that. Gatling gun? That wouldn't need a bonus of who built it. And what does he mean built it instead of invented? Yeah, you don't build so maybe, smokeless powder. Right. So maybe that one boat with the metal on it. But that was during the Civil War, wasn't it? So the submarine, yeah. maybe? They had submarines in the Civil War, too. And that was built by Bob, I believe, when he was still working for the U.S. government as a child. But uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Mississippi Thunder's out there. Good evening. All right. So there's the answers to one of them. Uh, Caltech is the same person as the Tech 9. Yep. Okay. So IDPA from that IDPA question. Um, what, you know, where was the, uh, oh, I didn't put it in here, I guess. What was the IDPA question? I'm going 76. Found it. Okay. And he also wanted one of the founders. Oh, okay. wasn't it so Jeff me, Cooper? Yep. And then along with Cooper, you're going to have, um, hold on, I'm trying to talk and type. So this is DJ and then. You're saying 76. I'm also saying 76. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we just both got 10 points there. Then um, who else would have been with Cooper back then? It would have been Cooper and Hackathorn and Wilson. Yeah, definitely. Hackathorn, Wilson. I got a picture of like four of the guys one time at SHOT Show. I'm standing there and I'm like, I think I'm looking at four of the people that invented IDPA. I took a picture of them because they're all just standing around talking shit. So I'm pretty sure we got that one, but that was a good one from DJ. Oh, and then that means we both get 20 points, right? Because of we came up with the bonus answer. So I never said you could put a bonus answer in there, but I like how people just took the initiative and started in a bonus question. So we're giving bonus questions now. So that is saying, where are the Remington rifles made? Interesting question, because, you know, that could be. Oh, I have to find it over here. Um, you know, depending on the time or time frame, I guess, that could be different places. So he says Philippines, Texas, New York, Kentucky. Where are they made? Where they are used to be made in rifles. New York. Now they're made in Kentucky, I think. So I'm typing and everything. And then let's see, where are they made? Philippines, Texas, New York, and Kentucky. Did I drive in Kentucky? I guess I drove past a Remington Bullets place. So I would say they used to be made in New York also. And then I think, am I crazy or were they made in Japan? Or is those just Reming well, Winchesters? That's Winchester and Browning, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah, Browning too. So then... I never heard of a rifle being made in Philippines, really, except for maybe some ARs and stuff. And I'm definitely sure it's not Texas. So, man, I don't, I'm going to say New York, but I don't think it is. So, yeah, I'm also going to say Kentucky. I mean, I know it was New York for sure. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'm saying Kentucky also. We'll find out. So then, oh, G23 said United States was the answer over there. I think I picked... Um, Russia and you picked the United States. 
I uh, yeah, I don't remember what you picked, but I picked the United States. I picked Russia. You were so, waffling between the two. Yeah, so I'm going to give ten points to you and ten points to, ten points more to G23 because they already had ten points for that one for being a good question. So uh, right on. So then, next question is: Oh, it is Jimmy out there? Right on. And then uh, the next one is true or false. Swinging a shotgun, this is from G23. Swinging a shotgun quickly will sling or elongate the pattern, making it easier to hit the target. True or false? That's an awesome question. Swinging the shotgun quickly uh, will elongate the pattern, making it easier to hit the target. I'm going to say no. False. Oh, I'm saying true. And I'm waiting for somebody to now think of it as being, you know, how you feel shoulder to brace. That's a machine gun. I feel like if you swing a shotgun too quickly, that's effectively creating a larger than 50 caliber projectile. So oh, it's I'm basically saying, turning it into a grenade. Yeah, seriously. It's like the Claymore. So I'm saying yes. He's saying no. So we're going to find out. Somebody's making some points right there. Uh, Early Watch is saying 1910. What was that one? Oh, the that FN. Was, that's one we both thought. So mm -hmm. we both get those points. But he still gets 10 points for bringing up a good question. And then DJ's throwing a link to the Patreons. Thanks for that. We have a scroll going at the bottom there. Again, the Patreons subscribe to what we do. They throw like a cup of coffee at us. Most of them, it's a cup of coffee, like five bucks or something. And we have 100 or... I can't remember, 140 or something. So, you know, it's enough to pay some bills and to keep the servers going. Our goal is to get 300, and then we'll be talking about doing uh, long format shows each evening. Really, the goal for doing a long format show is because I do have objectives. I'm only going to be alive for so long. I'm only going to have resources and effort to be able to put into the Second Amendment fight for so long. So thinking of that as a series of steps, you know, to get some stuff accomplished incrementally. You know, you do stuff daily you can get stuff accomplished. But there's a lot of time to just, or there's a lot of interest in just hanging out and farting around and you know, use in that as well. So, you know, if we could go longer and I could just go live over the evenings when often I'm just getting tasks accomplished, that'd be awesome. So something like I'm guessing 300 Patreons would make that a, a reality. So if you're interested in, uh, again, checking out that Patreon platform, uh, thanks for DJ for consistently throwing the link out there. Uh, it's definitely not, uh, a waste of time or money. It's a, it's a distribution of resources in a capitalist way that lets us accomplish uh, getting things done uh, without having to rely on um, part-timers or amateurs or people doing it in their spare time. So next we get G23 asking, true or false? False. The height of the brass head dictates how much powder a shotgun can hold. Hmm. Another good one. True or false? I feel like Woods would have appreciated these if he was around. The height of the brass head dictates how much powder a shot shell can hold. Clover would probably know this one if he was allowed to be up this late. You got an answer? I'm going to go true. Okay, I'm going false. You know what I can do? I can put the t answers in here too and then find out. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, I think it depends on how much pow power it can hold, but I don't think it matters. So I think you can, I think there's, I don't know enough about it, but I think there's times when you put in like slow burning powder and you have to put a lot in there, but I don't know. Um, the next one is, oh, the Columbia was the answer. Columbia, Missouri. Holds the Bianchi Cup since 1979. See, I just knew it was a weird name from hearing that in that sentence a lot. My mom was born in Mexico, Missouri. Cool. That would be super cool and also confusing for people. Uh, oh, so this is from what are the longest service, longest serving military rifles in the world? So we didn't come anywhere near a prime, all right. The actual options for us are, and I'm going to try to do this without the, without screwing it up here. So, 
uh, trying to read. We got a 303 Lee Enfield, and then that's a number one Mark three. I don't know what that means. Is that, and then a number four is a separate, I don't know what, can you tell what these are? Is a 303 Lee Enfield is one gun. A number one Mark three is a different kind of infield. Do you know how to break this up into the options? Um. Or no, is this just saying the 303 Enfield is the longest running gun? I guess in Afghanistan. So does that mean it was? It's been used so this, by the Afghanistan military. Probably. Do they so, have one? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they have them in service, then why would they throw them away, right? Especially if yeah. they're useful. But um, so that's just a long ass way of saying one rifle. That's not like I'm trying to break that down into four options. That's without. That, that's not four options. That's just a long way of saying a specific Enfield. Is that right? I don't know enough about them. I know these words, but I don't know enough about them to know where to put commas in there. Okay, and so he, the next... Go ahead. I, he's saying the Taliban used them. So if we had said Mosin, that would have been longer, right? He said 1907. So I don't remember when the Mosin came around. It was in the Mosin like 1919 or 1918 or something. 1891. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, then, yeah, I mean, Mosins are technically still in operation somewhere, I would think. But as far as, like, officially on somebody's list of, like, we still buy parts for these and you're still responsible for them, like, I don't know about that. Not Maybe. only are they still in service, they're, you, they're being used by Russians in Ukraine as we speak. They're using oh, okay. Mosin to gods. I mean, they still work. <laughs> um. Okay, we're just going to, where's the, that one has no points. We're just going to leave that one, no harm, no foul. Because that wasn't really, that was a too specific of an answer. I don't think we could have been expected to get all that. Yeah, um, it would have depended on what your definition of modern is. And who, yeah, I mean, I, wouldn't, I wasn't thinking Taliban. I was thinking like big ass armies. So then 1907, uh, I'm thinking is when the Enfield came out. He's answering that. Yeah. Then the next one is from DJ. The NRA was founded in 1871 in which Virginia city, Arlington, Virginia beach, Chesapeake or Fairfax. Wow. That's interesting. I don't know if that's ever been mentioned before because I don't think it's technically going to be accurate. I'm going to guess Arlington. Well, cause I'm pretty sure the NRA was founded in New York. That was the thing. You said Arlington. They're in Fairfax now. So, and, and they came from Washington, D.C., I think. But they may have come from Arlington. But the thing is, I'm pretty sure they were founded in New York. And then they had, um, what's that thing called? The, um, what are those rifles called? That was the first range. The, um, can't think of the New York range for some reason. Um, yeah, I don't know that. Oh, you do. Everybody. Creedmoor. They had Creedmoor oh. was their first range. And then Creedmoor rifles are named after it. Creedmoor got too small. So they went to New Jersey. And after New Jersey, they went to Ohio for um, where they're at now. But, uh, or wait, I'm thinking NRA. Yeah, NRA. And then uh, then it became the, um, what's that called? The uh, CMP thing in, in Ohio. But um, anyway, so NRA Camp started. Perry. Yeah, Camp Perry, thanks. Uh, so that's kind of the official ranges of NRA. But somewhere when they were founded, uh, they eventually got themselves to Virginia. So it could be Arlington, and I could just be completely wrong. Or it could be New York and then eventually Fairfax. So I'm not sure how he's going to answer that one. Um, that's a good one. So the next one is from Early Watch. The Maxim gun, a recoil-operated machine gun, was invented in 1884. Oh, by okay, so that's the answer to uh, what we said. What did we come up with? Uh, I said smokeless with, powder. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I came up with, submarine or some shit. So that means that early watch. Oh, you know what I need to do is lock this. I forgot how to do it in this software. Hold on. Let me view and freeze rows. Oh, come on. 
Why didn't it let me freeze that row? That's the whole point. Oh, we have an update. DJ okay. said he typed his question wrong. Um, instead of, he wasn't asking where it was founded. He was asking where it was headquartered. Ah, okay, okay. Then that makes more sense. So are you sticking with so, Arlington? Or, you know, you know, it's Fairfax. Fairfax. <laughs> I'm stealing yours. <laughs> so that's a good one, though. But we're taking those points. We'll take five, because, but that was a good one. Because he also got some extra. I'll give DJ five for that one also, because he got some extra stuff out there. So now I was given early watch points for this one, and that's 20 points. All right. So the next question is nope no cooper yeah we got that wrong oh no you got that one wrong i said hackathorn and uh vickers didn't i or bill wilson so i if you were thinking ipsic that's what happened and the idpa was in 70s ipsic was in 50s or something so because there was no way to take pictures of the ipsic guys we got the year wrong too oh we did get the year wrong so we both got the year wrong on that one and that was dj idpa Oh, I th if we both gave, I gave ours, gave us both 20 points arrogantly. So I'm going to now remove those <laughs> 20 points completely and then Need give, to give him 20. DJ 20. Yeah. And then I'm going to give myself five because I knew Hackathorn and I think I said Hackathorn and Wilson. But yeah, we both got the year wrong. And then you don't give, you, I'm not going to give the people who ask bonus questions extra questions when we don't know the bonus. They're just going to get their 10 points for stumping us. Okay, so then we did get the points back. We got that cleared up. Uh, Dat is saying Remington in New York. So I think we both said New York, right? We said they started there, and then we said they were probably in Kentucky. But we were thinking of the ammo, probably. Where are they now? Because they got bought. That's fine. So we'll give him 20 points. Got to find his column. Like, because they were made in, and we just both knew they were made in New York, but we were thinking that they booked out of there. And the thing is, have they even made rifles since they've been bought so many times? I think the Remington name's just sitting there and some ammo got its name on there. You know what I mean? But I don't know if rifles are actually being made under Remington anymore. Bar, uh, Bushmasters, I think, might be. They um, just started coming out with new Remington 700s, but I have no idea where they're being built now. So then G23 said the answer is false to the one. So that means I get 10 and he gets 10 on that one. Because you can, you can, uh, especially on like a 20, but even on a 410, I've seen people do it. So if you can swing it as you're shooting it, you definitely can get a bigger spread. It's not really cheating. It's just getting used to it or whatever. And you can kind of, you know, man, just like a spray paint can or something, you know, the more time you get behind the thing, the more you get to get the hang of that. So is G23 uh, wrong when he says it's, it doesn't? No, he said true or false. And I think you said false and I said true, right? And he's saying false is the answer. Yeah. So if he stumped you, he gets 10 points. And then if he stumps me, he doesn't get 10 points. So work that he gets 10 for stumping one of us. Okay. And then as far as brass stiffen in the hull, he says false. So I think that's we had the same situation happen there. Yeah, I got that wrong. And he says it's for positive extraction. I figured it was for something else. Like I knew it was for more of pressure than I thought it was for pressure, but I knew it was for something else. I thought. So DJ's next question is: uh, Let me double check the time. We still got a couple of minutes here, and then we'll start wrapping up and doing points and whatnot. Um, let's see. We're at number twenty-two. So why don't we get to twenty-five? That'll be three more actual questions, and then we'll start count, counting points. So DJ says, what's the birthday of the Air Force Reserve founded in 1948? And he's got the couple of answers in a multiple choice here. April 1st. Okay, so there's Air Force Day, and then there's uh, stupid Air Force anniversary. I don't know why. Same thing with the Navy, I think. 
So one of them is like when they invite people and say they're so great. And then the other one is when they actually celebrate stuff. Um, birthday of the Air Force, you said April 1st. I'm pretty sure it's April 14th. Air Force Reserve, founded in 1948. I'm saying September 14th. You still sticking with April 1st? Yep. Okay. So then DJ will tell us the answer on that one. Um, Taliban. Hold on. NRA founded in New York. Where is it headquartered? Okay. We've got that one figured out. Thanks. Um, okay. So then early watch comes up with another good one. Why is the Glock 25 not available to the average U.S. citizen? That's hmm. advanced. It's not impossible, but it's advanced to a... It's advanced owning a pistol through the 90s and the whole of like growth of Glocks. Because this is a question from like somebody would go, Oh, I like Glocks or whatever. How do you figure out what they're numbered? Oh, like this is 17, this is 23, this is 27. Like there's no real rhyme reason. You just have to memorize them. And then somebody goes, How come I can't get a 25? And this would be the answer. So the, to put it in a little easier for you, Glock 25 is in 380, I believe. So it's not in portable. Correct. So I'll give us both five because we kind of farted around, but that's a great question. I'm going to give Jimmy five for that one also because that's a great one to bring to the table. But I believe the answer is that it's because it's a 380 and the way that the import rules from 1968, which were designed to stop the importation of inexpensive guns, but also military firearms like military surplus. Um, they just didn't want that stuff around because clever individuals were modifying them into more refined and usable, useful for either target shooting or hunting or just recreational marksmanship or target shooting or training for some other type of use. But uh, because the manufacturers allegedly didn't want this stuff here, but more than likely that's bullshit, that it's the politicians that were scared of the, you know, people having that kind of stuff. Anyway, they created infringements, which basically give you this convoluted checklist. Welcome to the convoluted checklists back in 1968 that said something to the effect of if it's not made out of the right kind of metal, if it melts too easily, if it's not heavy enough, if it's too lightweight, if it can fit in your pocket, if it's too small, if it's too small a caliber, you'd get all these points and it could only have so many points to be able to import. So the Glock 25, because of its size and because it's made out of actual steel, it's literally impossible for a small caliber gun made quality of quality materials to be imported. So it's in this weird, stupid ass loophole that infringes on the uh, that particular caliber and size of gun being imported. No matter what they do to it, it wouldn't be able to be importable. So it was kind of a weird, I think there's two of them. There's like a weird couple of Glocks in there that we could never get. Now that they have Glock factories in the United States, they can produce them here and they kind of did, but I don't think they lasted very long because there's no, the 380 isn't popu popular anymore and they're a single stack in a full size frame. So it's a lot of wasted room in there. So they immediately, as soon as they could make a 380 here in the United States, they started redesigning and making a more efficient like model than the 25. At least that's how I think it went down. So, DJ saying the Jonathan Browning Home and Gun Shop is located in which state? That's a good question. That's too easy. Utah. Uh, let's see. Yep. So we'll take that one and take the points also. Thank you very much, DJ. But that is a good question. So uh, for people that aren't uh, paying attention to museums constantly and thinking about the uh, Browning, well, the Browning Museum is his workshop, and it's in the same town that his factories were in. And I visited there a bunch of times. Dead Horse lives there. So forever we would talk about that stuff. But DJ asked Connecticut, Utah, Nevada, or Illinois. Actually, now that you read that question, the Jonathan Browning home and gun shop is in Illinois. John Browning, right? John Moses Browning is being John. And his uh, house is in Utah. So I'll give us each five for that one now that I read the question better. Because I'm sure you're going to pick Illinois now. Or are you sticking with Utah? I'm confused. Jonathan Browning is his dad. And his dad made the harmonica gun. And his dad was a Mormon. Well, he's a Mormon too. But his dad was a Mormon when the Mormons were getting hustled out of Illinois. And they're 
town was getting burned down. So Jonathan Browning had a home and gun shop in Illinois that got burned down and it's a museum now. And that's the trick question because John Browning is his son and his place was in Utah. Everything he did was in Utah, but he wasn't born in Illinois. He was born once they got to Utah. So, uh, so they had the exact same name. Shouldn't it have been John Browning no. Sr.? No, Jonathan is his dad and John Browning is the son. I mean, okay. They have sounding name, but they're a different name. At least that's the way that it's ever, that's how people keep track of them and whatever. Like I always assume John it. was the nickname for Jonathan. No, it is. It's just that if everyone ever says Jonathan Browning, they mean his dad. It's just the... Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the way you keep them apart. I mean, because I've never heard anybody go, John Browning Sr. They just say Jonathan Browning when they're talking about his dad. I'm assuming that's the thing DJ saying. Um, then we got uh, that saying, what country developed a version of the Maxim that was able to use snow? So the Maxim was a machine gun and it was water cooled, but there's a com country that made a version that could uh, use snow instead of water to cool the barrels. Hmm. Does he give us options? I don't see any options. That one I would say is, you know, I would say options are better than no options. Not too many people are going to know that. I'm not saying it's a hundred percent obscure. We could probably come up with it. You know, it's going to be a country that's in the snow. It's probably Finland might be Russia, but it's probably Finland. Who else used the Maxim? Maxim is free, so it's not Soviets. So, you know, yeah, he sold those to basically snow. everyone. Oh yeah, I'm sure. But who could afford them and who would need snow, right? And who would modify them for snow? Canadians maybe, but I don't know. Finland's a good guess. DJ's asking, oh, actually we're at 25. So we got a couple of questions, we'll just burn them. Uh, Poma, the Professional Outdoor Media Association, was founded in 2005 in what state? That's a great question. I believe Remington currently makes some rifles in New York, but plan to move to Georgia. Following up on that one, thanks. Actually, I'm going to save a couple of these um, in case people want to use them in the future, so I don't need to burn through them just for no reason. So if you're listening to this in the future as a podcast or something, you're like, dang it, I feel like I got ripped off. Yeah, you did, because there was a whole bunch more that I ain't reading because we're already up to 25 and pretty soon we run into legal issues if we slam into the show behind us. So let's take a look at the scoring over here and see just who got stumped and who got chomped. So let's hide this current thing. I'm going to bring Sharon in. If you're uh, decent, Sharon, please come in. Screen Sharon is joining us. And now we'll, uh, here's your comments over here if you're making comments. And then here's the data that we're going to be taking a look at. Here is the comments in another version and a poll. So the poll was who will win tonight's tactical talk chump stump the chump challenge? Will it be me? Will it be Baron? Will it be you people? Will it be all of us because we're having fun together? Well, we're going to end it and we'll see just who is right about the answer to this question. Oh, and we so got our we, final answer. And what was it? It was Finland. Oh, snap. It was Finland. Snap. So I'm taking 10 points for that one. I'll give you five points and I'll give him five points. Uh, that was done, right? Boom. All right. So here we go. We're going to start adding them up. First, I can squish the question because nobody needs to know it because we've already known it. Squish that over. That lets everybody get in the list here. So this column here, I'll make it yellow, is the people that asked the questions. I can highlight everything and squish the columns up. There we go. And then bring it down just a hair. That's everybody's okay. So the first one is Baron. Oh, you know what I can do? I can just do this. So in a spreadsheet, you can go down here and you can create an equation. I think you click on this and you say sum and then you just stretch the little boxy thing to the column that you want like that. And then you hit enter and you got a number. Isn't that convenient? And now we know from the power of computers and robots that Baron just got 75 points tonight. Now, if I was a chump, I would have to do that over and over and over. Or I can just grab that and drag it yep. across like this. And now we got everybody's points. 
So it turns out I did win. Look at that. Smash. Nice. 100 points. Baron, 75. Second winner. DJ, 65. Who could have been a moderator. He could have been a contender. But instead, he almost plowed through everybody out there. 65 points. G23, 40 points. Early watch, 50, 45 points. Agent coming in with 20 points and done. 55 points. Well done. See what I did there? So uh, not bad. So I guess I'm keeping all the prizes. We will give uh, some sort of a prize to Baron, I suspect. Some sort of a prize to uh, DJ. So let's uh, go over here. Uh, let's see. Pappy Jonathan. Yep. All right. So we've got a... I'll get rid of Sharon here, but he's, you can see that we did this le legitimately. Everything's on the up and up. We open... Oop, that didn't work. Oh, I guess I soloed me. Hold on. So then if I do that, that works. This is called a uh, trapper keeper for patches, essentially. You can unzip it, and then what you get is pages and pages of patches. So people that sell patches or collect patches will get these things. And it's sort of like having books of Velcro, and on them you can put your patches. What I do with them is take them to places like rallies and different things so that i got a bunch of different patches with me. So typically, if somebody uh, wants to buy something off of me or trade with me or whatever, I've got this booklet. Sometimes it's full, depending on what kind of stock we got in stock. And I drag this around. You'll notice that some of these things are common patches that we have all the time. Most of them are ours. A couple of them, like wheeled, are specific ones to other people. Some of them, like the AZCDLs, patches that we helped other organizations get created. Uh, something like that flag, same thing. Kind of ours, kind of not ours, depending on how you want to look at it. So, uh, Baron and DJ are both going to be grabbing out of here tonight. Anything catching your fancy there, Baron? DJ? I'm liking the look at that Colt. We're talking the uh, revolver patch back here? Mm hmm. I don't, I don't know how many of these are left, but there are a couple of stashed ones in here still. All right, so we'll be putting that. I think I might have other stuff. I can't remember if I so did you buy something off the store and then I sent you stuff anyway, like separately. I can't ever keep track. Yeah, of I bought um, the Old West playing cards. You did send yeah. me those. I thought I'm about missing, that. And I'm like, that's probably what? What are you missing? I'm missing Gizzard Gary um, patch. I won that. And then the previous week I won, but we didn't pick anything. Well, that one, yeah. I mean, that's because, like I say, I'm like, is this that? Is this getting barren? Like, I can't tell. Unless, so in the future, if anybody orders stuff from the store, I definitely appreciate it. But put a note on there, like, I'm so-and-so from such-and-such, because I do not keep track of who people are. So I, could, I was like, do I recognize this address or not? And I couldn't remember. So um, DJ saying chair is against the wall. So I guess there's a chair in here, the last chair right here. Right on. All right, well, so again, everybody had a possibility. A bunch of people were in contention. Uh, if anybody's got any ideas on how to do this one a little bit differently or how to supplement it, let me know. We do the uh, stump the chumps occasionally. I like this one. This one worked out pretty good. So thanks to uh, Dunn and to Agent and to uh, Jimmy and to G23 and to DJ and to Baron. Everybody uh, made it a good show. You can have this piece of toweling if you want also. Up to you. Yeah, great questions, guys. Close this, and then how do I bring it to normal? Like this? Like that. So, uh, yeah. So, we'll uh, let's see. We were going to say, I don't know. I was thinking about bringing back the hashtag stuff, so I might be implementing some of that. But uh, I guess we'll talk about that at a future date. So with that, we'll wrap this one up. We closed the poll already, so I don't have to tidy that up. I will put in a link over here, unless uh, DJ already did it, to the um, mouse party. So Baron and Foss host the mouse party, a uh, late night non-scripted uh, show after this one, a uh, conversation you can join in on or participate in through the text chat. And um, it's for a couple hours. It's usually uh, a fun time. So if you want to check that out, feel free. Otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow on Thursdays. We alternate between travel and training. This week, the ladies of the DC Project, 55 of them are in DC. So I'll probably be going live sometime during the day to 
focus on that and to uh, give them as much, uh, and, you know, as much effort as we can to uh, enable them to or to get the awareness out about what they're doing and give them whatever we can you know, from this side of the Internet. Uh, we may be going live sooner than later with uh, Toby from Cape Gunworks about uh, Massachusetts gun laws. Uh, thinking about doing a series, I've been trying to, efforting to do a series with gun shop owners. I've got a couple lined up with actual dates in the future, but uh, turns out it's really difficult to get gun shop owners to chat for an hour during business hours about their stores. They're just busy. So um, I'll continue to effort on that. I might end up doing it on like a Saturday or a weeknight or something so that it's like after hours. Uh, if that works out better for them. But uh, in addition to that, I've been thinking about doing something that's uh, kind of a focus on state laws, but from people who have to deal with the state laws instead of just like from afar. So um, <clears throat> stay tuned for that stuff. And again, if you'd like to see that stuff happen sooner than later, then uh, check out Patreon. Uh, grab 20 bucks each month. Consider that your uh, 20 bucks for 2A if you've subscribed to some organization or whatever. Uh, check the difference. You you spend 20 bucks on some individuals, people that are creating content or providing a service or trying to do something different. And then uh, after a few months of uh, being part of them, of supporting their project and being part of what they're creating, let me know if that's more or less satisfying than having like a subscription to Disney that don't give a shit about our rights and hasn't doesn't do anything except change the Overton window against us. So I uh, appreciate the people that make it possible for us to spend the time like this. And uh, we're back to pick you up later. Oh, thanks again, Baron, for uh, jumping in. Do you want to plug anything besides the uh, uh, the mouse party tonight? Um, no, that's it. Yeah, come join us over there. DJ posted the link. Um, oh, okay, cool. Every other link you guys do the overnight as well. Is this what's where's our cycle? Are we on? Yeah, we on this is an off week. week. Oh man, so that's. Bullshit. I'm trying to convince him to do a Sunday night mouse party on our off weeks where we do brackets yeah well that should happen that should definitely happen i believe that could be done with uh, a bunch of uh, petitioning and a bunch of lawsuits and yeah uh maybe a rally so we'll make this happen GearWebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is Free Patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at GearWebsites.com. This episode, Nobody Beats the House. So let us know what you think. We'll be watching the comments wherever you find the video over on GunStreamer.com or on GunTube.org. Thank you for supporting our projects. If you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee, check out our Patreon channel. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourages you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thank you for watching GunWebsites.com.